Welcome to Electron Line. The only difference between this example and the previous video is that the capacitors are different in size. We have a 2 microfarad capacitor, a 3 microfarad capacitor, and a 4 microfarad capacitor. We still only have one of them being charged. The other one has zero charge initially. We connect them just like before, and the same principle will take place that some of the charge on the first capacitor will leak onto the second capacitor, which then, of course, has kind of a cascading effect onto the third capacitor, and then that charge will come around and negate the negative charge on this side. So all that is still the same, except now the capacitors are different in size. How do we do it now? Exactly the same way as before. We're going to add up the voltages around the circuit, and add them up to zero. So we go from negative to positive, that's V1 minus V2, because here we go from positive to negative, minus V3, we'll come all the way around, that should add up to zero, which means that V1 is equal to V2 plus V3. And then using the definition of capacitance, where the capacitance is equal to the ratio of the charge divided by the voltage, which therefore can be solve for the voltage being the ratio of the charge over capacitance we can write that v1 will be q1 the final charge on c1 divided by c1 is equal to q2 divided by c2 plus q3 divided by c3 and q1 q2 and q3 small letters q represent the final charge on each of the three capacitors when large q represents the initial charge how do we figure out what Q1, Q2, and Q3 are equal to? Well, first of all, let's replace C1, C2, and C3 with their values. Here you can see that Q1 divided by 2 is equal to Q2 divided by 3 plus Q4 divided by 4. Oh, not 4, Q3 divided by 4. There we go. Now, we need to find two more equations relating these charges to one another. Well, first of all, we again realize that if one charge moves from C1 to C2, a charge has to move from C2 to C3 because we have a serious connection here, which means that whatever moves on to C2 also moves on to C3, therefore Q2 must equal Q3. And, again, like we saw before, whatever comes off of C1 moves on to C2, in other words, Q2 is going to be equal to, oh no, I don't want to look at it that way. Let's look at this way. Q1, the amount of charge remaining on C1, is going to be equal to the charge you started with, big Q1, minus the amount of charge that moves to C2. And since Q1 is equal to 40, Q1, small Q1, is equal to 40 minus Q2, or we can say that Q2 is equal to 40 minus Q1. So then we come over here, we can now replace Q2 by this, and since Q3 is equal to Q2, we can replace Q3 by this as well. Which means, when we move over here, we have Q1 over 2, which is equal to Q2, which is 40 minus Q1 over 3, plus Q3, which is equal to Q2, therefore also equal to 40 minus Q1 over, in this case, 4, because that's the size of that third capacitor. Now we must multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. In this case, the lowest common denominator is 12, and so 12 divided by 2 is 6, so we end up with 6Q1 equals 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4 times 40 is 160, minus 4 times Q1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3, so plus 120 minus 3Q1. Now we have an equation with just one variable, Q1. We can solve for that one variable, moving all the Q1s to one side, 6. So we have 6Q1 plus 4Q1 plus 3Q1 is equal to 160 plus 120 or 13Q1 is equal to 280, which means Q1 is equal to 280 divided by 13. And for that, we need a calculator. 
that gives us 21.54, 21.54 microcoulombs. So there's the charge Q1. Now, with this equation, we can find Q2. Q2 is equal to 40 minus Q1, which is equal to 40 minus 21.54. And so this is equal to 18.46 microcoulombs. Yep, all right. So that gives us Q2 and Q3, since it's equal to Q2, also equals 18.46 microcoulombs. Now something tells me that that seems a little odd. Hmm. Times that is 160, hmm. 3 times that is 120. Let me check Together something. 80 again. to 80 so we have divided by 13 equals 21.54. That seems correct. Now let's check that just to make sure if we did things correctly. And the best thing to do is to go back to this equation right here, plug in all the numbers we have and see if that gives us a reasonable result. So when we come over here, Q1, which we said was 21.54 divided by 2, is that equal in D2, Q2, which is 18.46 divided by 3, plus Q3, which is 18.46 divided by 4. All right, let's see if that ends up being correct. So I'm taking 18.46 divided by 3, plus... 18.46 divided by 4 and when I do that I get 21.54 divided by 2 is that indeed equal to 10.77 and sure enough if I multiply this times 2 I will get 21.54 yes I do and therefore yes I did get the correct answers it didn't appear that way, but that's what's so strange about capacitors since they're different sizes, they have different ratios of charges on them, and it's not always clear that when you get an answer, you found the correct answer. And also realize when you add these three charges together, you do not get the total initial charge you started with. That's not a good way to check if you did the problem correctly. And that's how it's done.